Hey, flying saucer! Hey, hey, flying saucer! Hi everyone, this is Jason from Dieter Von Bitmap and the Henry and Mama Show. So if you've listened to my other tutorials, you know I love Toon Boom Studio. Six months ago I had no ability to animate or uh, draw or do anything like that, and you can see where I'm at today. Never had any formal training yet. You know, a couple months later I'm able to do some pretty cool stuff. So this is a dance seed from the Henry and Mama Show that I had just done recently. Um, although the, the Toon Boom uh, Studio tool is very easy to use and the documentation is overall pretty good, uh, there were some things that I found very ponderous at best, and so I want to cover those in the next couple of tutorials. Uh, the topics include cell swapping, which is a super powerful tool uh, once you get the hang of it, lip syncing, the scene manager, and the topic for today, which is libraries. I think one of the reasons I had uh, problems with these the first time around is that I really had no experience with um, animation in the past, didn't know what they were used for. Now as I've gotten into it a little bit more, uh, I want to share what I've learned because they, these are super powerful tools and will save you a lot of time in the long run. Okay, I've switched over to Toon Boom Studio. What you want to do is click on the main wind or the window in the main toolbar, go down to the library, open that up, and what you'll see is several different choices of library. The first one is the animation uh, folder, and that contains all the images and, and elements that are included in the current project that you're working on. So only available in, in there, um, but they're currently visible. If you go over to this local um, folder that includes everything that you could use within this current project whether it's down here in the timeline or not so if I wanted to move something over to the library while I was working on another scene or something like that I could put it over in the library and then bring it back the global means it's accessible to uh, any project that you're currently working on so let's kind of go dig through those in a little bit more detail so going back up to the animation uh, folder if I click on this see it says scene one I only have one scene within this project and I open it up. There we go. What you can see is all the, again, the elements that are currently down in my timeline. And so these are all pieces of Henry, this his tail and his legs and things like that. Um, and then I have a couple different versions of Henry in there as well that are not currently visible. Um, but this, for example, is the, the dance floor in the back, or the, the floor in the back. I'll go ahead and click on that, Let's see if we can get to see an image of that. Seems like it's thinking about that. There we go. Um, so when we click on that, then you can see the image. If you go down here, let's say a picture of his tail. And that's the picture of, as it says here, his lower tail. So that's the part of his tail that's attached to his body. So again, you can go down all these, these different pieces here. These are all uh, part of the current animation. Okay, the next um, folder that's down here is the local. Again, that's for, for items that you want to be able to use in the current project, but are not necessarily available in this timeline right now. Again, it could be from elements from a different scene or something like that. I don't really use that too frequently. Usually what I like to do is be able to recycle some characters between the different projects. So what I usually use is the global animation folder. And what this contains is, again, things that I've used in other projects. And so, for example, here's Job of the Hut from one of the, one of the videos that I did, the Henry and Mama's 80s show. Um, and then all the different little styles of hairballs and Pac-Man and things like that. So again, these are, these are available to you when you're working on any projects. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like, you know, how you use these. So let's say I go ahead and grab this Billy Idol here. And what I'm going to do is just drag him right over to the timeline. And you can see where that little plus sign is. Go ahead and let him go. It's going to think for a minute. You can see the little pinwheel that comes up. And what we've just added there is the hairball Billy Idol. And you can see I don't have any of the things showing right now. So if I just switch over, there he is. Uh, what's kind of neat about this again is that you can you know, put whole characters in here. So if you look over here, here is, you know, not only his body, but all the different pieces. You know, it's his glove, his mouth, his, his two eyes. So he's ready to go, basically. And what you can do, you can see his mouth is already moving. So any animation that you've saved in another scene, um, you know, is all ready to go. And there's some people just like to, um, you know, just have the first frame or whatever. Sometimes I'll save the first frame. Sometimes I'll save, you know, a whole animated series. So on the Henry and Mama dance floor that we watched at the beginning, that whole dance sequence of him kind of uh, dancing around, doing the worm, doing the, uh, the vanilla ice moves, things like that, that was actually all saved in another project. What I did 
was again save it to the library and then bring it over. So again, it's a great way to kind of recycle, reuse uh, your your previous animation. Okay, so that's how to bring something into the library, or bring something out of the library that's already in there. Um, let's talk about now how to get something into the library. So first thing that you'd want to you know know is why would you want to put something in the library in the first place? Let's go ahead and hide Billy Idol. Get him out of there. So let's say I wanted to, to have a copy of Henry here. And let's say, you know, one of the obvious things to do is to go down there and copy Henry again. So this one happens to be the Henry side. You can see that selected when I click on it. So let's say I go ahead and duplicate element. That should work, right? The problem with that is, especially when you have items on pegs, it only appears to, to take the first um, element within it. So you can see that I've actually duplicated the peg element. You can see a little peg symbol there. But I didn't, there's nothing underneath there. I can't, there's no down arrow that I can open up and, and there's no, you know, actual animation pieces in there. So that unfortunately doesn't help me out. So let's go ahead and um, undo that. So what do we actually do? What we want to do is move that library back over. I don't necessarily want it on the top. Let's keep it where it's easy to see. Whoops. Lighten with it there a little bit. So um, let's go ahead and take this Henry. Again, Henry's got lots of elements underneath it, like a ton of elements plus a lot of dance uh, sequence moves that we had underneath here. Let's go ahead and close them up. And what we're going to do is just kind of just the opposite of what we did with the uh, Billy Idol hairball. Let's move it over. So I'm going to select that thing. Again, remember, close it all up. Don't have it open. And you can see I can just drag it over there. We're going to get the plus sign. And there I just copied it over. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't save it by the peg name. It saves it, save it by, saves it by the first element within the peg. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and rename that. So let's just call Henry Side. Okay, so we go ahead and rename it. It brings it up here in alphabetical order. So it's actually in there now. It's in the global library. One of the things I'd recommend you do as you're working through your project, obviously, is save often. But when you copy something over to the library, go ahead and hit right here, Save Global Library. And that way you can bring it out right away. Okay, so let's kind of bring Henry back. Again, let's say we wanted two Henrys dancing here, or scratching at the door. Do it the same way. I'm just going to select it. I'll do that again, just select it. And then bring it over, see how it turns into the plus sign? And what you're going to do is drop it into that timeline. And so this has got a lot of elements underneath it, so it's going to, it's going to think for a while, but there it is. So it says Henry side 2, we brought him over. Okay, so let's close out the library. Okay, so I brought Henry over, where is he? Well remember, I mean this is an exact duplicate, so Henry is actually Oops, let me select him here. I'll select all of them. Is hiding under Henry. Okay, so you got two Henrys now. What's kind of neat about that is if I go ahead and push play, right, we got two Henrys in unison. So if you want to do a dance scene or something like that, he is ready to go. He is all animated, so you can imagine, you know, doing some kind of line dance or something like that where you needed a lot of characters to. Um, move around in, the, in unison. What's kind of boring about this, right, there's, there's two Henrys here, but they're identical. Let's say we wanted to um, make them a little bit more interesting. So let's go over to this Henry over here, the first Henry. We'll drop that down, open it up a little bit. Let's go to his head, and let's say we have multiple cells here, and I'll show you how to do this in the next tutorial. You know, we got the, the regular standard Henry head right here. Let's make it a little bit more interesting, right? So we're going to switch it over to this head, and you can see it's already changed over here. And let's just go ahead and make sure that uh, we got this all the way through. So again, let me go back and go to the play up here. I can do a force frame rate, which will, you know, clip down the images a little bit, but force it to uh, play at the actual frame rate that you would see the 24 frames per second. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So basically you have two Henrys now that are in unison. They're scratching together. You see we got one Henry that's got the Devo hat on though. So you can see what a powerful tool this is. You can do a lot of copying and pasting and sw cell swapping and you can end up with a lot of different things. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your time. 
Uh, if you have questions, uh, please leave them in the comments section. If you have ideas for other uh, videos that I can cover, please leave those in the comments section. And as always, really, really appreciate it. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, uh, you go ahead and fr uh, friend me and subscribe to the channel. It's all very, very much appreciated. That I'll ensure that I keep the videos coming. Let's me know that you guys are enjoying them and find them valuable. So again, thanks for your time today. Got questions, leave them for me. Happy animating.